May I speak in the name of God, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As some of you may know, I hail from the city at Africa's most southerly extremity, the city of Cape Town. The city's motto is Space Bona, Good Hope, and it has its origins in the age of exploration. Bartholomew Dyer sailed around the Cape Coast in 1488, searching for a sea route to the Indies, but he failed. The journey around the Cape had been tempestuous. The people encountered often unfriendly. And so he returned, unsuccessful, to Lisbon, having named the Cape Cabo Tormentosa, the Cape of Storms, or perhaps of Torments. When he reported to Prince Henry the Navigator, Henry was convinced that the tempestuous Cape was wrongly named. And he changed it. He changed it to Cabo de Boa Esperanza, the Cape of Good Hope. And in 1497, Vasco da Gama made the next journey and successfully discovered the lucrative sea route to the Indies, landing on the shores of Calicut. The city of Cape Town's coat of arms, now in abeyance but not yet replaced, includes three anchors, a Christian symbol of hope. And just last Sunday, Charles Cooper, at the Patronal Festival of St. Clements, spoke of the use of the anchor in St. Clement's martyrdom, but also of the hope that it represents. Advent, which we begin today, is for Christians a season of hope, a season of expectation, a season of contemplation, and ultimately a season of joy. We are called to watch and to wait, to be wakeful, wary, wandering, and to be prepared. Watchfulness, wakefulness, wokeness in modern parlance requires us to be alive to this moment. Not only are we expecting the imminent commemoration of the incarnation of our Lord and Savior, but more importantly, we anticipate the parousia, the adventus, the second coming of our risen Lord, whom we are reminded will return to judge the quick and the dead. But there's also a sense of a third coming, the advent of the saving grace of God through Jesus in our own lives, embraced, renewed, reflected. So Advent requires us to be contemplative, to be reflective about our Christian lives, our Christian witness, our relationship to the God who loves us unconditionally and with such bigness. There is indeed a wideness in God's mercy. This God, who so loved the world, gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is what Christian hope is all about. Life immortal alongside our brother Jesus, as heirs to the kingdom of, the God, of God, who is our eternal Father. So how do we watch? How do we wait? How do we witness? Well, I would suggest that much of this could be accomplished through prayerful engagement with God, that we should, in preparation for the greatest gift of all, spend some time in reflective mode, counting our blessings, exploring and deepening our relationship with the God who loves us, through reading of scripture, through prayer, through worship, through fasting, seeking out our neighbors in need, addressing aspects of our own lives, our relationships, where we have may have fallen short of the mark, seeking out those darker recesses to open them to God's forgiving light. The world may bustle around us and we may bustle within it. After all, there are cakes to bake, puddings to stir, crackers to buy, presents to wrap, and cards to send as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Redeemer, the ultimate gift of love. That love, paraphrasing George Herbert, which bids us welcome, but from which we too often draw back. That love which is the very source and foundation of our hope, 
that birth, that incarnation is a cause for great joy, great celebration, for mirth and merriment. So let us not be too Scrooge-like as we survey our neighbours bustling towards Christmas. Let's join with them. Let us with love proclaim the message of hope. John Donne sent a group of friends a signet ring with an anchor on it, with a crucified Christ included upon it. One of which went to George Herbert, and that prompted a short poem entitled Hope. I gave to hope a watch of mine, but he, an anchor, gave to me. Then an old prayer book I did present, and he, an optic, sent. With that I gave a vial full of tears, but he, a few green ears. Ah, loiterer, I'm no more, no more I'll bring. I did expect a ring. It's a beautiful poem, which reflects on our relationship with God. The personified hope of the poem is God the Son, but it also shows the mistakes we make in the interpretation of hope, of our relationship with God, with love. This, on the face of it, is a dialogue between the speaker and hope, but like most of us who hope for things to come, to happen, to materialize, we are impatient for the manifestation, for the outcomes of things for which we hope. But the hope of which Herbert speaks is different. It's a longer term investment of time and energy. It requires work, tenacity, fortitude, witness, vision. There is a reciprocity in this relationship, but it appears that for the speaker, he feels that he is making all the effort giving time, a watch of mine, prayers and supplication, reading and worship, the well-worn, well-thumbed old prayer book, and suffering for it, the vial of full of tears, the anguish of it. But all that he seems to overlook, the value of the gifts, the anchor we know represented the crucified Christ, the optic, a telescope, an instrument of vision, bringing the distant closer, providing perspective, giving us a glimpse of the future, and a few green ears, the very food that feeds us, that nourishes and sustains us. Just think about the implication of the theology of all of that, the cross, the vision of a future, the very bread of life a table set before us to which we are all invited to dine. But the spe speaker seeks more, a ring, a consummation, a covenantal relationship with hope, with love, feels frustrated and vents his wrath. Our loiterer, a time waster, how often do we feel like that? But it is to miss the very point. Christian hope is founded on a firm belief that what God promises, he will deliver. And therefore, we ought, in the words of St. Peter, to gird up the loins of our mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is what Advent is all about. So yes, we need to watch, we need to wait, but I also mentioned wokeness, a newish concept which may be defined as the state of being aware, especially of social injustice, of prejudice, of inequality, the lack of love of neighbor. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that, knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. This truly is the space bona, the good hope for all the world. So watch, be awake, be woke. Enable God's kingdom to come in earth as it is in heaven.
so that we may pray fulsomely and daily the words of the Advent Collect. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and forever. 